Hello. In this video, we're going to take a look at an example of series shunt feedback in a voltage amplifier um, with a practical example of an amplifier we're familiar with, which is the non-inverting amplifier. Uh, first of all, I have uh, redrawn the basic structure, uh, the generic structure for a series shunt uh, or series voltage amplifier, which uh, consists of a feedback network the input voltage um, or, or the feedback voltage is connected in series with the input voltage, with the source voltage, um, and the output is uh, taken in shunt. The output signal is sampled in shunt. And so basically this could be our output signal right here, the out. Uh, this could be our signal uh, VF, feedback signal. Um, and then the input signal will just be Vs minus Vf, as you can see, just from um, applying KVL to the circuit. I'm actually going to write it all out. V in equals Vs minus Vf. All right. And now uh, let's move down to our um, practical example, which is the non-inverting amplifier. We can see this is a non-inverting amplifier. Uh, the input is applied to the non-inverting input terminal, uh, V sub S. And uh, there is a feedback network comprised of um, resistors RI and RF, um, RF connected in the feedback path. Now our feedback uh, network in this case is going to be that voltage divider over there. And you can see that we are sampling our output signal in shunt, and we can perhaps represent that a bit more clearly by uh, writing it like this, my output signal is being taken between that output node and, and ground. So essentially, uh, when you're sampling it from here uh, to ground, that is where the other end of RI is going, you're sampling it in shunt or in parallel. And then the input signal, you're applying it um, in series. So essentially, we can also represent this as follows to make it more clear this of s um, and you can see that this is um, the feedback uh, voltage will be v sub f the voltage appearing uh, between the output right there of the feedback network and the other output which goes to ground so that's v sub f um, and V sub in is equal to Vs minus Vf, again from applying KVL. Uh, so let's take a look at how the different um, parameters for a, a standard or general feedback circuit apply here. Uh, first of all, we have our feedback factor, beta. And in this case, we can see that beta is going to be the gain of the feedback network, um, and essentially the ratio of Vf to V out. Um, and we can see that in this case, it's just the result of voltage division between Rf and Ri. And so Vf is going to be equal to V out times Ri over Ri plus Rf. So that is my feedback factor or the gain of, of my feedback um, loop. Then I have my uh, loop gain, A beta is basically going to be that times the gain, so A times Ri divided by Ri plus Rf. Um, my uh, closed loop gain A sub F it's going to be equal to the ratio of V out to V S. And we know from our previous study that it's going to be the open loop gain divided by the amount of feedback. And now if my open loop gain is sufficiently high, I will achieve gain desensitization. What do I mean by that? It will mean that my closed loop gain will become almost independent of the open loop gain 
I'm pretty much just dependent on the feedback network. And let's see how that works. Uh, for values of the loop gain much greater than one, then I can approximate my expression for AF, my closed loop gain, as being approximately uh, one over beta, which is RI plus RF divided by RI, just from the beta expression up there, which is one plus RF over RI, which matches uh, the, the closed loop gain that we know for a non-inverting amplifier. We have seen, when we can see that, you know, the, the term of the open loop gain has disappeared. Uh, since we know a little bit more now about negative feedback systems, we expect that we are also going to gain other things, not just the gain being independent of the open loop gain, but we're going to also get improvements in both input and output resistance with respect to the open loop amplifier. And so when I have it connected in feedback, I expect my uh, input resistance is going to be the input resistance of the op amp multiply times the amount of feedback and my output resistance for the overall system is going to be equal to the output resistance of the op amp uh, divided by the loop gain or the amount of feedback, sorry. Um, and so this corroborates uh, what we know both about the non-inverting amplifier, but also puts um, a little bit more in context all these new parameters uh, that we have studied in negative feedback. Thank you.